The hashtag boycott Uber is now trending after Uber CEO compared Saudi Arabia's murder of Jamal Khashoggi to a fatal accident involving Uber's self driving cars. Yes, that was his comparison. Dara Khashoggi has now apologized for those comments made in this interview with Axios. Take a listen. I think that government uh, said that they made a mistake. Well, they um, made a mistake that, and somebody's well, dead. Listen, it's, it's, it, it's a serious mistake. We've made mistakes too, right, with self-driving uh, and we stopped driving and we're recovering from that mistake. So I think that people make mistakes. It doesn't mean that they can never be forgiven. I think they've taken it seriously. And the, CIA, from my guys, standpoint, the CIA didn't suggest that they made a mistake and that it was an oversight. Like with self-driving, that was a, basically a bad censor, correct? This yes. was, the CIA suggested that the crown prince had a role in ordering an assassination. It's a different thing. You guys didn't intentionally didn't, run somebody over. I didn't read that part of the CIA report. You're, you're obviously deeper in it. But I think from a Saudi perspective, they're just like any other shareholder, right? It's we, now we're a public company. Anyone can invest in our company if they choose to do so. And they're a big investor, just like you could be a big investor as well. Y you can imagine those comments are raising eyebrows in part because of Uber's ties to Saudi Arabia. Now, the kingdom is, of course, a key investor, both through its public investment fund and through Masasan's vision fund. And the managing director of the Saudi investment fund sits, of course, on Uber's board of directors. Joining me now, David Bach, professor and deputy dean at Yale's, uh, Yale's School of Management. And, and the thing that's been so jaw-dropping for me here, and, and you know, remember, this is the age of the celebrity CEO. And Dara is none other than a celebrity CEO. This is a man whose personal pedigree comes from his own personal story from a repressive regime in Iran. Personally, I think he'd have a hard time explaining that comment to his family, never mind to shareholders. But what do you think went wrong here in his thinking? I, I have no idea. I'm just as puzzled as you are. You're absolutely right. He's actually made a name for himself as being sort of Uber's chief diplomat going around the world rebuilding relationship. And, you know, clearly the mistake here is the mistake he made. You know, what Saudi Arabia did was horrendous. And, and to call it a mistake is just an unexcusable, unforced error on his part. We say it's an unforced error. He seemed to realize it quite quickly. I want to just go to his apology. He said, I said something in the moment that I do not believe when it came to Jamal Khashoggi. His murder was reprehensible and should not be excused or forgotten. Here's the fine point of it, though. There's a financial noose around his neck, isn't there? It was put there by Saudi investors. Um, in terms of Uber trying to figure out how to mitigate the effects of this, how do you do it? Because, you know, for the shock that you and I may have registered, you and I both know that there are executives sitting there saying, well, of course that's what he said. The Saudis bankroll of a large part yeah. of Uber. Well, look, I mean, I think he does, des he should deserve some credit for trying to clear it up within an hour and for apologizing for the comment and setting it straight. And at the end of the day, I think a lot of stakeholders will look at not just the mistake, but how you deal with it. And so, you know, he's doing much better on that front. But you're absolutely right. You know, Uber is an important shareholder. He has to be very careful. And I think it highlights more generally the challenge that a lot of CEOs find themselves in. On the one hand side, reckoning with Saudi Arabia's human rights records and, and you know, many of the terrible things that are happening in the region. But at the same time, clearly, uh, you know, being influenced by the country's political and economic cloud. And in the Uber case, you know, having them as a major shareholder. You made such a good point uh, in the notes I was reading about this, and that's that it's difficult for CEOs to be taking such a firm moral stand if they can't even count on world leaders to take such a firm stand on countries like Saudi Arabia. And, you know, this isn't just the U.S. president. There are, you know, a long list of other countries that are not putting their foot down about this. How does it make it more difficult for CEOs? I think, you know, we're, we're absolutely right. We're sort of in this age of uh, CEOs as statespeople or, you know, uh, political figures. And, you know, there's a lot of upside to that. But at the same time, you have to realize that there's certain things that, you know, states, real statespeople, you know, world leaders ought to be doing. And if they're not giving them cover, it's very difficult sometimes for CEOs uh, to assume that role. And, you know, certainly when it comes to Saudi Arabia, uh, some of the most prominent voices in the world um, are sort of signaling, you know, the U.S. president, but also, as you mentioned, many others, uh, let's get uh, back to business as usual. And so it's very difficult, I think, for CEOs uh, to diverge from that. Now, the blowback he's experiencing, what's happening in social media, I'm sure the questions that his employees are now asking him suggest that, uh, you know, this clearly wasn't uh, proper. 
Uh, but I think more generally, uh, we can't be expecting, I think, CEOs to do what some of our elected global officials are not doing themselves. Yeah, and it's such a good point, especially to be fair to them, because they are running companies and not nation states. Uh, David, thanks so much for coming in. Really appreciate it.